six pack lapping at. We got Marcellus Williams back on the podcast uh, once again, sir. And your team had a hell of a powerlifting America Nationals. A hell yes, of a sir. showing. Um, we got a lot to talk about. Obviously, all the members of your team we could touch up on, but even just powerlifting talk in general, because Team USA looks incredibly stacked. Jesus Oliveira is grabbing the microphone, predicting a clean sweep. Now, I'm assuming he's talking about the men's side, but if he's talking to women's, oh my goodness, but that would that would be <laughs> that that's tough. Cause we got people like I get the shit go who are alive. But yeah. What was your overall impressions before we get into like more detailed? What was your overall impressions of this powerlift in American Nationals? Uh, it was the most fun that I have had coaching and, and handling at a meet in a in a long time. Honestly, uh, handling and coaching, you know, it's a job. It's always work, but there's obviously the, the fun aspect of it as well. And I can say for me, and, and granted, that part of it is subjective, right? The subjective part for me is that you know. And like say at USAPL Nationals, I'm handling like 20 plus individuals. I'm at multiple sessions throughout the day. Whereas this one, I got to be at just one session each day, just handling five people in total. But I think part of it was also just the uh, the overall atmosphere was different. It kind of reminded me of like 2019 Nationals before the split, having everybody mm. like kind of like under the same banner again. Um, and then even just the energy of like the officials, man, like the the refs, the judges, the people at the score table, everyone's just really friendly, really play. Everyone's there for the lifter. And I'm very big on that. I don't care what federation it is. It's like whether it's early, late in the evening, if you're going to be there, if you're going to volunteer to be there, come with a good attitude. We're there for the lifters. And I feel like there was a lot of that. Um, it was it was it was it was a fun experience. And then just the production quality of everything. Like you can't help but get hyped to come back the next day when they're cranking out the promo videos that quickly and stuff like that of how people did, it was, it was, it was fun. And it was also, for me, it was different because obviously like, you know, at this point I've had clients who, you know, won the pro series, uh, won USAPL Nats and stuff like that, but simply due to the split, if you win Nats, that's kind of it. So knowing that there was a little bit more weight to this one where it's like, okay, Hey, if we win this, we get to go to worlds. We get to go to that next level, that next step. Um, And, you know, kind of mark that off as far as like, you know, coaching, um accommodation stuff like that it's it was it was cool man it was it was a really good time I had a really good time and I think I think for my clients to compete it was kind of the same thing too like you know of course there's a pressure with it but it was like it was just a fun meet and I think I think we get away from that sometimes you know what I mean like we used to caught up in like this leads to this this is that but it was nice to just be like yo I enjoyed the meet for what it was at the meet itself like yeah I'm looking forward to what's next but it was just it was a good time it, the, this year in particular not only do you go to Worlds, you got Sheffield in World Games. It is the beginning of a pathway, and it all came down to one day's performance. That's a lot of pressure. Obviously, yeah. people got to perform at Worlds, but even if you podium at Worlds, you might get a wild card invite if it was a close battle. Let's say you come in second to someone at Worlds, but it's a close battle, like Jack Jacob, Natalie Richards. I'll see you at Sheffield. You're still going to go sometimes, yeah. right? And then, of course, if you podium at Worlds, you're still going to World Games. So in terms of, like, straight up winning and securing your spot, this was a crucial day. You could not yeah. be off. You couldn't be injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to – yeah, you had to come You had to come in um, – whatever hand you had ready, you had to be ready to play it for sure. And and that's, that's a big part of it, what it was, you know, for me and for the team as well. Because obviously it's like, you know – and I've told my clients, like, hey, you know, when – if you make it to Worlds, it's not just Team Craftsmanship anymore. Like, we're Team USA. We're representing the nation as a whole. And that's what matters. But with that being said, for our team specifically, it's kind of like – I always tell people I have, like, I have primary coaching goals and I have, like, secondary coaching goals. My primary coaching goals include things like provide the highest quality service that I can to every client that I work with and then continue to create and put out content that helps elevate lifters and coaches as well. But my secondary goals as a coach are all competitive stuff. Like, okay, what have I, what have we not done as a team, right? Like we've won nationals, we've won the pro series, we've won best team uh, lifter for males, females. So with this, it's like, this lets us ch- like check off the last remaining things. Cause the only thing left to do at this point is like, so worlds, Sheffield world games. And for me, you know, if we get to that point and get to that level, which I have full faith and confidence that we will, I can just, really at that point, just focus on just those primary goals. Because at that point, the secondary goals in my mind are kind of done. Obviously, you want to come back, repeat, stuff like that. But I can truly mark off and say that I've done everything that I think a coach can want to do in our sport as it currently stands. So I'm excited for that. 
going into this, what do you think was the closest battles that had you nail biting moments? You're like, oh my gosh, I know for myself or your team who it is. Um, but you, you let me know. What do you think? Were you ever like, holy smokes, this is going to be tough. This is yet confidence. But if anything is like, this is going to be the, the toughest ask. For, so just for my people, right? Yeah, yeah just man. just for your people for now. For for mine, man. Well, it's 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 so in terms of like battles that I thought would be closer, right? Originally, originally it was um it was definitely Petrie because we had to battle head to head with Gavin. But the moment Gavin didn't make weight at that point, it was like you know the eight ninety three is still going to beat. It's not like I'm not I'm not sneezing at that total. I mean, I'm not sneezing at that total and set by case like that. But it's kind of a thing where it's like okay, I know we can do this. Like, I, I fully know we're capable of this. Like, it, it's one thing if, like, okay, we got to beat the 893, but then if Gavin's on, he hits 895, 897, whatever, we also have to beat that. There's a little bit more pressure with that, right? Still have right. fully, still full belief in Peach capability to do it. But the moment it was like, hey, we just have to hit, you have to beat 893. Like, the moment we found out Gavin didn't make weight, you know, we, we let ourselves feel how we felt about that. And then I told Peach, I'm like, we know what we got to do. Like, nothing changes. Like, and, and we... We planned to have him hit 895 on the second regardless. Like, that that was what the plan was coming in because we felt doing that would push Gavin more and set us up. Um, so once once it was a matter of just, hey, we have this number to beat, we know we can beat it, we know we have to hit to beat it, just, just go in and do it. So I guess really at that point, the moment Gavin didn't make weight, it kind of shifted to where then in my mind the biggest challenge would then be Bob. Because Bob still had to go against Big Dev. So it's just, it's a little bit different because, yeah, it's a big total to beat. But when you know what your lifter's capable of, which is about execution, that's a little bit different compared to when it's like, okay, Bob's strong, he has the higher topic, but man, we can't really make too many mistakes because Big Dev is right there. So it, it shifted at that point for sure. I, I feel like it, it's it's weird because 895 is a monster total for 93s. And we, yeah. we, as a matter of fact, I mean, it's like so, the so biggest. Yeah, like yeah. It's, yeah, it is like the, it's that, the, it is that total. Yeah, it is the biggest. Now we had, so Gavin was not a ninety three when he hit his. Gustav has hit it. Petrie's hit it. So it's starting to become like a, a benchmark for elite level ninety threes. Now Gavin has to prove he could hit that while getting to ninety three. How were you guys, when you first found out Gavin didn't make it, relieved? Or, okay, this makes it simpler or disappointed or we wanted a battle. Or, like, for myself, if I was in Brandon's shoes, I know you, I ran back there. And I was like, look, at for you, sir, take it as a win and just go to world. The battle is worlds. All you care – if you win – if you become a world champion, nobody cares what happened at Nationals. Be a world champion this year and when you retell your story 20 years from now – I mean, you'll tell the battle's stories, but – it became a simpler task now, just freaking a tunnel vision, which which you don't always get in this sport. However, I I was disappointed as a viewer, yeah. but that's but my entertainment will be added stress for your team because you're like, damn man, now we gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, no, straight up, like so objectively, right? Like on paper, you are correct. Like it's a simpler goal. I mean, like I just said, okay, it's one less thing to do, but we were pissed. Like mm. we weren't just disappointed. We were, we were pissed. Like not so much like, not so much like, oh, angry. Like we hate Gavin, like, but it's obvious. We love Gavin. Like we like, like Petra has a lot of love for Gavin. I have a lot of love for Gavin. Um, Like was talking to him going into this past chef field being like, Hey man, don't let them take away what's yours. Be undeniable with the squad record. But it's this thing, man, where everyone's different. And I understand for a lot of people, it's kind of like, um, Hey, if I accomplish the goal, that's what matters for myself as a coach and a lifter and then for a lot of my lifters under me, we care about the process that gets us to that goal. And it simply me would have meant more to us had Gavin made weight and had we beaten him on top of being Kago's record. It, it also just, it brings out an edge, right? Like Petrie's mm -hmm. somebody where he's, he's no stranger to adversity. He's used to struggling, used to back and forth. And he wants to be able to undeniably say, Hey, I did this. I won. Right. Like, and granted, you know, Gavin still competed. He put the same total, but Petrie way, way lighter, obviously. But it's like, it's one of those things where we don't want anybody to be able to say, oh, well, you did this because you didn't have to worry about Gavin. I was like, no, nah, we, we want to put all that to rest. So we definitely weren't happy about it, but we didn't have time to sit there and just be pissed, right? And plus, 
like Petrie said himself, well, if we're pissed about it, you know Gavin's got to be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, cool. dude, yeah. Yeah, so we're like, let's just do what we came here to do. Um, and like you said, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the, the goal is still Worlds. And, I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like I'm very – there's very few moments where – something happens like like a win or a victory for the team where I'm not immediately thinking like, okay, what do we got to do next? This is one of those few times where I did really let myself just be very happy and proud of what we accomplished because we came in there and everybody did pretty much what we expected what we planned to do. So I let myself enjoy it. But there is still the next phase, right? There is still Worlds. So even though we didn't get that direct head-to-head battle there, we will get it at Worlds for sure. And I know we're looking forward to it. I know Peter's looking forward to it. Um, Gustav is a strong dude. Like, it's, I think – I'm shooting even at Sheffield hit eight ninety five. I think he was good for 900 to be honest um, on the day, like all out. So it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. We're still going to get that head to head battle. I, I, and Gavin being Gavin, I know he's going to come back around at some point and do what he needs to do to try to have another head to head battle. So, yeah. Yeah. Gavin keeps popping up, man. You can't kick yeah. him. <laughs> he's got nine lives. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I know. So when I talked to Gavin, he was super disappointed initially. And he was actually talking like, you know, I don't know. Do I do this? Do I go through? The whole goal was worlds. And then I was telling him, my friend, you made it this way. You trained hard for a month. You might as well go out there and do your best. And he put forth, I mean, 895, a handsome total. Albeit, though, he was a good chunk over the weight limit. Yeah, um, so, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a significant chunk. It wasn't yeah. zero point something. It was yeah. 95.4, I believe. So that's a yeah. good chunk. Um, I'm going to have Matt Gary on for the recap. He is not forgiving when people miss weight classes. Oh um, yeah. No, I, I mean, know, my name I know was Steven. Matt was back there with us. So that way, like when I'm on the platform, my guys can still be warming up. So that he was helping us out with that. And, yeah, I could tell I we were all pissed, but he was like, and, and I get it, man. Like, once again, this is, this is, this is for me, like, you know, like I said, all love towards Gavin. Gavin knows, if Gavin, you're listening to this, you know, nothing but love for you, bro. But yeah, to me, I'm just like, dog, you just made weight five weeks ago, right? So in my mind, you need to just be on it and not letting your weight get that. Like, let's say, you, I'm not sure exactly what he walks around. Let's say you walk around like 215 or even as heavy as 220 or off season, whatever. Cool. But you're competing again in five weeks. Don't let yourself get heavier than 210. Stay locked in with your nutrition because you know what you have to do in the next five weeks. Mm. It just doesn't make sense to me. I think that's why – I'll put it this way. There was no part – even when he didn't show up to weigh initially, Peter and I expected him not to be there immediately. We knew he was, like, he, he has these pretty drastic cuts. But there was zero part in our mind. Of, we didn't even, like – when we were talking about the game plan, we didn't even think, like, oh, and if Gavin doesn't make weight. Like, that didn't even cross our minds a possibility, especially Gavin being the way he is, talking the way he talks about how serious, how much he wants it. I'm like – okay, you didn't get what you want at Sheffield. There's no way you're going to, like, not – there's no way you're going to not get it because you didn't make weight. So, yeah, that's one of those things where, like, you know, it can happen to anybody. I get it. Um, you know, mistakes happen, things happen. Like, you know, I've, I've had clients not make weight for things before. But when it's something like this and when you talked so much about it, I just – I don't know. That was that was crazy to me. It, it, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what – I'll have Gavin on at some point to talk about the story on – on what happened there. Thank God this was a nationals where you're representing yourself fighting for your, po- your position and not worlds where yeah. you, you now took it. Like yeah. it, you took someone's position and, and you forego it. That happens yeah. as well too sometimes. And yeah. that's where, even though Matt, who's for anyone listening, the, the head coach for team USA, steam comes out of his ears. When people miss weight, he is a huge proponent of, of hit it. But he, the one caveat he said, I mean, he said the same thing that you said. Look, I love Gavin. This is nothing personal on him, but my poly on making weight is massive. However, he's like, I'll give, I'll give him this. He's lucky it wasn't a national team, and we're showing up at an international event because I would be all types of rumbled. <laughs> However, what does hurt is um, when you try to get on a national team. You don't want anyone second guessing whether or not like, yeah, if it's between you and someone else and they're like, but this other person always makes weight and we're worried that if we put you on, you don't make it. You don't want that. If everything's even, let's say him and Keiko, I don't know what Keiko's plans are. Keiko might be laying low for a while, but if it's between him and Keiko going on North Americans and they're both trying to break the world record, they're going to, they'll have to ask themselves as head coaches, Keiko never misses. Gavin's missed now. 
yeah. go with the sure money. If if yeah. we need something to split. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You you need every variable in your favor. I mean, that's a big thing too, with like, you know, the storyline with Megan, for example, where, you know, like a lot of people, yeah, yeah. like, you know, she didn't make weight lashes like that, which of course, you know, she wasn't under me at that time. She started with me very soon after. But I it, for one, I wasn't worried about it because I know like that's the thing. Like if clients do what I have laid out, they're gonna make weight, no problem. But I understood the weight that came with that. Like I was um I was on another podcast where I was where I was talking about the fact that like, you know, every time I make a game plan with clients, beyond just the numbers, I have a list of priorities that for me as the coach, okay, what are our main goals? Because you know, lifters have things they want to do for placing and position, but then they might have personal goals they want to hit as well, right? And I kind of rank those out. And the number one priority of Megan was just make weight. Cause I'm like, I'm like, if she makes weight, she wins. Right. Then the second priority for her was um, PR the total. Cause I know a lot of people are like, Oh, Hey, she'll make weight, but will she go on the strength or like, will she hit like a fraction, which she did before. And then the third goal was like her personal goal. She wanted in terms of total stuff like that. But yeah, cause it matters. Right. Cause it's like, there's already this narrative around her, right. Where it's like, Oh, Hey, she can do this and that, but like she has to make weight. So for me, it's like, we're not just going to make weight, but it's going to be perfect. Like my plan for her was to weigh in at exactly 52. And that's, she did. She weighed in exactly 52. Yeah. Cause I also know, like, I mean, we, I mean, we, you, you know, you've been doing this long enough to know yourself, Brian, but like when you're that light already losing a percentage of your weight, even two, three pounds is a lot. So we don't need to lose any more than what's needed. So yeah, it, that, that went perfectly, but that's the other thing too. I didn't want it to be a thing where, you know, it wasn't just for me in my mind, it wasn't just enough for Megan to, to make weight. I'm like, Hey, you need to make weight and we need to perform well so that, you know, Matt Gary and like the world, they can have confidence in knowing like, okay, we can count on Megan. And I, I feel like she was, she more than did that. I mean, first time being 52 and PR her total on a seven for a nine day at that. So yeah. it's the thing too, with Megan, she had never weighed in at 52, mm-hmm. which was that, so there, there had to be question marks around it, and it was. Yeah. I also want to talk about Wasker's cut, which became <laughs> freaking insane when I heard about it. Holy smokes! You yeah. earned every penny if the rumors are true. But before we get to Wasker, um, yeah, the fact that Megan had never weighed in at fifty-two, it was such a like question mark around it. It made it a storyline. It has mm-hmm. to be. Not only is it a storyline, if she had never weighed fifty-two and was dropping down, that's one thing. To never weigh 52 and the last time you tried, you missed, becomes a whole nother talking point. And then I believe she lifted in January 55 point something, not chump change to lose. Mm-hmm. Flip side, 453 is that would have won her the world championships in 2022. And now that Evie's here, that still might bump out Noemi Oliver who's an yeah. all-time great at 52. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what Noemi does. Yeah. Only only Evie's ahead of that. In a World Games qualifying year, Megan is looking good. Yeah, I mean, it's the third highest total in the weight class, which is <laughs> crazy to still say. Um, and it's yeah. funny, because like I said, priority of goals, like I said, PR in the total, but she was hoping, like, and that's part of it too, because um, some people, have, and, and I'm actually going to do a YouTube video over this where I kind of break down each person's performance. You're not just getting the game plan, but explaining why we did certain things. I think it's good to be able to give people context. Because uh, once she made weight, my goal for her was like, okay, let's set ourselves up to where if we just get our second attempt, squat and bench, and then get our third pull, we PR the total. Um, but then the reason why we went for certain things on her third squat and bench was because she wanted to hit a 460 total. If, 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 mm. if it was there and it's also just good data for me because we were in a fortunate position to where it's like okay we made weight we hit our seconds we win so let's see where the strength is at let's see what type of jumps we make like let's like we only made a five kilo jump from her second to her third but we saw that okay if your second's this heavy then a five kilo boost is a lot for you on that third so maybe that tells us go a little bit lighter on the second for a bigger potential third at worlds and stuff like that it was it was good data because it's like okay you finally made 52, but this is the first and only time you get to be 52 before Worlds. I need to know where you're at. I'm okay with potentially maybe missing a lift if I know we still PR the total and I can get an idea of where you're at and to what degree we're at. So that's what we did for the squat and bench. But then on the deadlift, of course, just wanted to lock things in. Um, but yeah, I mean, hit the third highest total. And yeah, I mean, I think she is set very well for World Games. I mean, I, I, we, we plan to only be stronger by the time we get we get to Worlds. So. It's... It- it's very difficult when you have literally only one data point now. Yeah. At least you have this. At least yeah. you have this. And yeah. You're 100% right where you're like, I'm not sure. We're kind of flying blind. I- I've seen you in the gym, but 
yeah. a whole nother ball game. You've never made 52 and gone all out. Yeah. And to your point about being safe with respect to the other uh, contenders, she was safe after she made it and the strength was there. Once you establish the strength yeah. was there, yeah. let's play We're around good. a little bit. Let's see yeah. what this looks like. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. And, you that's, know? and that's what you have to do because my, my mindset is this, right? It's just like, okay, we could have jumped two and a half or five on the squat for the third. We could jump two and a half or five on the mission. My thing is like, okay, well, let's say we jumped to two and a half. But based on how it moves, we don't know how much is or isn't left, right? In my mind, I almost rather take the five and you get it and it'd be hard or you miss it. But I now know that's where you're at. I know. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to yeah. guess or wonder. You know what I mean? Like, because it's 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 one of those things where like, okay, you're playing the game right then and there. But I'm also thinking about the game that's going to be happening about 13 weeks later, right? That Those are the things you have to think about when you have the opportunity. So obviously, if things are a little bit closer, once again, no disrespect to our competition, especially because, I mean, they all came in a lot stronger than what they did the year before from what I was getting number wise. But it's like the moment she hit her squad opener, I'm like, okay, we're good. Like we're, <laughs> our strength's in a good spot. So Yeah, we're not gambling. We're yeah, not gambling exactly. Exactly. There's no risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was – um. So yeah, so Megan and Megan's an obviously a super tough uh, tough class as well. Um, so talking about Brendan, also who, who would you think is because I don't know if you saw the Emil Krastev nine oh six training day with his buddy. The video was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah, got yeah. emotional yeah. and his his buddy, this is in Bulgaria, was like, somebody has to be the greatest. Somebody has to be the greatest. And the mills on his knees, like getting emotional. It was it was like the ninety threes always deliver. From all over the world, from Sweden to Bulgaria to America to whatever. Um, who do you think is the biggest threat? Or are you like, look, I can't call this. So, there, so Emil, uh, I mean, just from that and training alone, strong, right? If I have to go with what's done on the platform at the end of the day, because... And granted, if somebody like let's it's different. Like, let's say somebody's they're walking around at competition weight, they have a great training day, they hit everything to comp standards. That's a little bit different, right? Versus if you're if you're chilling over the weight class and get all that. But at the end of the day, in terms of who like the total, who has the actual total right now, right? It is still Gustav, right? So it's not even it's not a thing where I'm even looking at like who's so much a bigger threat. I look more so at like, okay, what did they each done? What do I think the potential is to do on the platform? And then I kind of evaluate and make the game plan from there, right? And honestly, for me, it's a matter of, you know, like when Petra's like, listen, bro, it's very simple. Because, and that's the thing, a lot of people don't have, I mean, if they watch this YouTube recap, so they have the context now, but like what we were able to do with that 885 with the small amount of training we had where he was actually healthy was huge. So now that he's, healthy and feels good i'm like we have 13 weeks to get you just so ready and strong to where it doesn't matter what they do that's that's kind of the mindset that i'm on it's like it's like don't let it be close enough to where oh you gotta account for this and this like no come in there and just be really ready really to dominate the platform that's what we have to do because it's 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 hard to call between emil and gustav for sure just because of what he just did like before that video came out i, I would say yeah. Gustav, obviously Same. right same. But, but, but like, I can't not account for that. Um, and, and like you said, with the 93, there's a passion that I think like, like, and this is, this just isn't true for every lifter, but it's just like a passion that a lot of top 93s have that I do believe gives you, it gives you something on me. Like, it's like when, when, you're, when it's that close and you have something to prove, you know what I mean? And they're yeah. all coming in with that, right? Like, 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 you know, Gustav, I'm sure, has the mindset of, like, I want to show that it wasn't just a one-off thing with Sheffield. Emil's like, I got to be able to put this on the platform. Patriots, like, you know, no matter what I do, this seems like someone always has something to say or something to doubt or something to take away from. So let me go do put on the World Station. They can't take anything else away from me. So I think it's going to be really interesting um, just in regards to that, for sure. It'll be weird that Keiko isn't there. Yeah. Like, and not even competing. It's yeah. so – it's it's weird because he's always – he like I, for the longest time since we came back from COVID, he's yeah. always been there. Yeah, it's so I, yeah. My understanding is from what at least from what I hear, like here and there, is that you know I know like a lot of like the back to back meets and stuff like that can be a locker room to do and stuff like that. So I I definitely I definitely get it, and I definitely understand. You know, you know, I mean, like you know, Gavin's a little bit more of a psychopath, right? He'll come back <laughs> in five weeks and and do what he can do, but I can understand like Kegel being like, hey. I put up 893. I'm gonna gonna hope that's enough. 
But I'm not going to lie, the moment those totals were done, right? Like the moment Shepard was done, I literally like hit up Petrie and he was immediately, I was like, I was like, if they don't show up again in the next five weeks, they're going to regret that. It's not, it's not going to be like, like, so it is weird and it, it is odd, especially him being, you know, decorated 93 that he is. But I mean, you know, it's one of those things where like, that's the risk you take with it. Right. And, and until, you know, hopefully maybe eventually the scheduling changes so that, you know, it doesn't have to be such a quick turnaround. Cause I know that's gotta like on one end, it's like, it's cool that they have the option. It's like, Hey, you can let that total stand, but it's got to suck a little bit to be like, man, but I can't be there to make sure, you know what I mean? But yeah. since that's what he chose to do, it's like, all right, well, we'll, we'll take that spot then. But yeah, I mean, I guess I guess at the end of the day, though, that's that's the thing, too, whether it's, you know, because who's to say, if let's say Petrie or Gavin, neither of them had, had to beat it, right? Like, with I don't know where Keiko's mentality is at. Would he still have, like, foregone his spot? Would he have still taken his spot? I, I don't know either way. Um, but, I mean, in my mind, the, the whole thing was, don't he, like, it's not his choice anymore. You know what I mean? You got to go in there and beat it and take it, so. Yeah, I, I do wonder, because it was a quick turnaround, but not – entirely the craziest like obviously gavin yeah. gavin missed weight but his strength levels were well, strength was good was better his better. strength was good yeah i i i truly i mean i know his third squat you know guy uh, didn't count but like i was actually counting on that i was like i was like man especially like when i look at how gavin's built his leverage i see how things are going in training i'm like i think he'll be good to squat more potentially i said the bench we, who knows i said and then the deadlift would be the interesting one because on one end he had way more on the deadlift than what it looked like to me at Sheffield. But it's also a thing like, okay, but how does this deadlift peak? How does it recover in that five-week interval? But right. he, yeah, he, I mean, he showed up, despite being heavier, obviously, but I still think he showed up very, very strong. So, I I mean, I mean, I, I know I speak for both Peter myself, but I say I wish Keiko would have came. I, I, I wish he would have. I think, I think it would have made it a lot more interesting. Um, and it's also a thing where it's like, I don't know, just for me, it's – it's one thing if the gap is so wide where you know, like, like for example, like if you're a Natalie Richards, right, or, or a Jesus, then it's like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to yeah. come back and throw off training momentum. It doesn't make sense. But when it's that close, when everything's that close, like, because I guess for me, if I'm Keiko, right, well, I know how close Gavin is. We can pee on the same day. And if I look at what Petrie was hitting as a 90, right, and see how close it is, and then if I go look and see what he hit when he was barely above 93 at the first Virginia Pro, in my mind, I'm like, nah it's too close i can't i can't i can't risk that spot right but that's also what makes me wonder like okay well how mentally in it was he still because he did allow that spot to be up for grabs so and this is this is what i think because he's been in the fire for so long in every from nationals not everyone has this Sometimes they have a nationals where they win comfortably like like megan and you know plenty of others and sometimes it's a barn burner every nationals, every worlds, every everything, every Sheffield. Like Keiko, yeah. every time he turns around, it's always an amazing battle. Now, this is good and bad. It's good that people never miss your sessions because, like, I can't wait to see the 93s. And if you're the guy who keeps winning them, which nine times out of ten he would win, it elevates you to, like, like the Rocky loved – athlete who everyone's like oh my god he keeps winning and the battles are so amazing to watch on the flip side there will be some burnout there will be some i would not be surprised if that wasn't a, a factor where he's like you know what i kind of want to chill if that's not good enough i'm at peace i'm at peace because i don't think i could turn it around that quickly i i need to <laughs> replenish if it's good enough i'll think about it if it's not uh, hats off to whoever got it. I mean, the total is going to be a mat, going to be eight ninety five, yeah. which is competitive. Yeah. So he's probably at peace with it. I can't help but wonder though if seeing what Petrie did kind of reawoken some things. I know, like a few days ago, I saw him was on the story. He was like kind of re reposting a bunch of vocal, and I just made me think, oh, okay, I mean, maybe, can't help, yeah, you, can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like maybe that woke him up. Which I hope that's the case. Like, that's my yeah. thing. Like, like I said, I'm not. I've just, I've just never been like that. Like, yes, you know, as a coach, as a lifter myself, my guys don't like that. We don't necessarily, if an easy win's there, cool. Yeah, we'll take it. But that's not really what we want. It's like, we, we are here to compete. We want to compete. It, it is, it, it's, it's higher stakes. It's more pressure, but it's more fun. There's more passion when you have somebody to beat, you know what I mean? So I, I hope it did wake something up in him. I hope he's like, 
you know what? I'm not done quite yet. You know what I mean? I, I hope that's the case. I want I want to see Keiko come back and come back better. And I want to see those type of battles happen. Like, I want it to be set up to where, like, you know, let's say everything goes down. Petrie does Sheffield and stuff like that, right? I want it to be where now Petrie's in the same spot, potentially, where it's like, I can't necessarily just, just chill out, right? Now, mind you, if he does, like, if we just blow up so much to where it doesn't even matter what anybody else does, cool. We'll chill. But don't make that easy for us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like step it back up and let's see what yeah. we can do. Yeah. It's um, it's also tough because now I don't think he'll be eligible for even a Sheffield wild card, which is, yeah, pardon the pun, but wild in and of itself to think even that. However, sport moves on. And by the time next Sheffield rolls around, the reigning world Sheffield, the reigning Sheffield champion is a 93 the world – so Gustav's going to be there. The world champion, if it's Petrie, do they bring – what if they have brought Keiko anyways? Or what if they have been like, look, we already had 293s. Maybe we bring another one, but, you know, it depends on what the other weight classes do. It's tough. It's yeah, it's so yeah. uber tough. That's what I was going to say. At that point, it's not even about what the 93s do. It's about what everybody else does. If everybody right. else performs as what they should – I think it's very hard to swing that. But if somebody messes up, somebody flops, some life circumstance comes up, who who knows, man? Um, I mean, even with Gavin getting it this last time, right, that wasn't necessarily a thing where anybody was certain that was going to happen, right? Yeah. I think a lot of people were pretty sure it wasn't going to happen and it still did. So it's it, – and that's what's interesting, man. It's, it, so much can happen. I mean, even now, between now and then, it's like, it's like oh, man, we're like at this point, oh, we're like 12 weeks out from, from Worlds, right? It's like it seems like a very short time frame, and it is, but – it's like three months. Anything can happen in three months. So, so how much more can happen by the time? You know what I'm saying? So we'll we'll see. Um, what I did like, and what initially I want, I'll talk to Matt. Um, we're going to record the recap tonight. Initially, Matt wasn't on board with Petrie locking up eight ninety or uh, eight ninety five on the second attempt. But I don't know if he. I can't remember if he pulled back on up. But here's. I, I said, and I'll have the podcast with him, maybe Matt pulled back on that and rethought it. But I was saying, picture my friend, Petrie pulls Sumo. And Sumo is nowhere near as for sure as conventional. Even though his Petrie's Sumo isn't like a, a Noriega style, like very mm -hmm. spread where, where you can have bobbles at the top. He's a little more based, but it still is Sumo. As a matter of fact, if I'm honest with you, even if he pulled conventional, uh, why, if you're not, if you're just going against yourself and nobody else is pressing, why not? If you know the number you need to lock in, have two attempts to lock it in. Yeah. And Matt, I know, doesn't like big jumps. Yeah. But you don't need necessarily even a big jump. If that's what you don't like, I would pose to you, your last warm up is as heavy as your first attempt. Your first attempt is like your second, your third, your second attempt is like your, th just take yeah. two kicks Take two kicks at it because, to be completely honest, at that point, with Petrie's end goal, it doesn't matter if he's – well, that means he's opening rather high if he's opening a second attempt weight. I got news for you. Petrie's going out on his shield to make Team USA and get the Sheffield, get the World Games. Petrie will push all of his chips to the middle. This is what he's here for. This is yeah. all he's here Petrie for. Petrie will you know, do whatever it takes. Yeah. And, I'll, and, let, and let me give context. It was funny because Susie, um, you know, Mass Wolf actually came up to me talking about that too. But when I gave her more context, she was like, okay, that actually makes more sense. So there's a few things that have to be understood. The first thing is that Petrie had not pulled 800 since USAPL National September of last year. Um, simply due to the fact, like, quick background during this prep, he moved from Houston to Fort Worth. That's about a five hour dif difference in driving. Um, but when he came down here, and he's, like, he's coming down and think, cool, training's going to be good, everything's going to be smooth, new environment. But he was having to go back and forth between Fort Worth and Houston on an almost daily basis for weeks because of family stuff going on. It's more personal stuff. We'll get into it. But he had a loss in the family, things like that. Um, and due to all the back and forth driving, having random training sessions off of variable, his leg was pretty messed up for a vast majority of this prep. Like the heaviest squat that he took was only like a 6'8", a shaky 6'83", the block before the final block going into Nats. And the heaviest deadlift he pulled was 771 back in like December. Right. Mm. Um, so really, in terms of him feeling good and healthy and strong and us adjusting things, he really had two weeks of feeling normal. Right. We had about a block. We were able to touch some heavy loads. There's still some pain. But then that final like two weeks feeling is when he felt normal. Right. Um, 
and but we but from his background we know that hey if we're able to just touch enough and do enough because you still was working through everything i'm like we can still show up and do what we need to do with the peaks we know how he shows up on the platform so his squad opener moved very very well no issues there his second squat attempt he felt the same leg flare up a little bit he was able to push through but he, he felt he felt it so that's why even with the third i'm like okay 315 makes more sense than 317 and a half. 312 and a half doesn't quite place where you need to be. 315, I know it can do. I'm like, hey, lock your back in, tension it, and just stand up and drive through. He was able to do that. But after that happened on a second attempt, even though he feels as much as third, in my mind, I'm already thinking, I'm like, okay, on this day, Petrie is probably, probably good for like one solid 800 pound plus pull, right? And once again, he pulls sumo. And with the adrenals like that, I'm like, we because we did we bumped his opener a little we bumped his opener to set him for the same jump we would have made to a second anyway we just bumped the opener to, to match that same jump to the second and i'm like worst case he misses it but knows what to fix and adjust and can just pull it all out there i said the best case if since it's really just the same jump we're going to do from open to second anyway he should be good for it it might it might be a little bit harder than what we'd like just because of the fact that we haven't touched that much weight in a while but I know Petri can do it, right? So it's it's it, in actuality, in my mind, there's less risk versus taking an even heavier second, maybe nuking himself a little bit more for that third, and then you only have one chance to pull it and you're done, right? So that is kind of more of the context going into it and why we did it, as well as the fact that, okay, now that we are feeling good these last two weeks, maybe you feel even stronger than what we expect, in which case, if we secure on the second, we feel good enough for a third, we can take more on our third. We can bump five kilos, maybe take 900. So once again, right. I have I have priorities for everything. Where it's like, if we secure, we need on the second. Worst case, we don't need the third. Best case, you can take more for the third and, and boost the total even more, right? You have to kind of prepare yourself from these different possibilities. And that's not that's not even any bashing on anybody who's like, oh, I seems like a weird thing to do. That's why I'm doing that whole YouTube video to give context. Because look, I get it, man. I get it. On the outside looking in, you look at some of the numbers we load, some of the jumps we make, it's not the norm, right? But when I give context of relative percentage and this and that, like I, I tell people, like I, an example I use to people all the time is I was like, okay, let's say you have a lighter weight male or female working up to like a 140 kg like squat right and let's say they take like the bar then they take a 70 um 100 110 120 130 and then they go to 140 right no one's gonna look at that in bad and eye. it looks like very normal jumps but if i tell you somebody else like a heavier weight dude is taking like okay 70 120 170 uh 220 250 and then like 275 right like 270 like 600 they're looking at all oh, those jumps are so big but if i break down the relative percentages they did the same thing they both took about 93 percent of their angle for their last warm-up right mm -hmm. so when you put things in context when you practice how you play because like that jump that petrie did is not something we have not done several times before it's actually safer because i know what was I, I know you've made this jump before and i know that we may have more left if we need it I don't know if you'll have more left if you're taking a higher percentage than what you typically do for that second, and then you have nothing left for the third. Like, how devastating would that have been? Like, he hits second and mm. moves smoothly, but now, okay, you got to hit this. I'm a little bit gassed from what I just did. The leg clears up again. It's just not smart at that point to me, whereas, worst case, if you miss it, we go at it again, right? Yeah. I, I thought – I mean, I said so in the commentary. I thought that was the right move to make. Because it's, it just sets you up. There's there's too many intangibles with these kind of things. And yeah. now that you gave perspective of him saying, look at man, I'm probably one big one. Let's go in. If I miss on technicality, I could I could tighten it up again. But that's yeah. all we have to. You're not like, yeah. you exactly. don't have someone chasing you where you need all nine attempts type deal. If Gavin was there, you got to talk about it. Things change, yeah. whatever. But if Gavin's not there and it's just the number, yeah. What are we talking about? We know exactly the number we got to hit. And, yeah. and that last poll was work. I was talking about on the Perk podcast. At the time, I was so like, he's got this. At the time, I'm so like, Brendan's an 895er. But that yeah. was work. And to your point, now it makes more sense that he hadn't been hitting that kind of weight. But while he was pulling it, I remember thinking, oh, he's going to have it. But when I rewatch it, some people were telling me, it was more work than you're remembering, my friend. And I was like, oh, shit, that was a bit of work. He would have had two goes at it. Um, and to your, it, the background story makes a lot more sense now when you're saying he hadn't gone over 800. This was this was a roughed up, Brandon. There's storyline in the back. You never yeah. know. This yeah. is where Gavin will look back and be like, 
Dude, Petrie was vulnerable on that day. He won't be yeah. next time. He and won't that, be and, next time. And that's, that was... <laughs> and that's the thing that I want to tell the people, right? Because, you know, I've heard different stuff, this and that, like, oh, what if he would have dropped it with, with this and that? First of all, like, regardless of, like, how hard it was, was it? My, my man locked it out. Yeah. Went to his left. Now, there's no question. Life, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, put yeah. it that, and I'll say it, but, but beyond that, it's the fact of this is why I want people to understand. Petrie told 895 with arguably one of the roughest preps we've had. So I'm telling y'all, like, my man's good. He's healthy. We already knew kind of what his capability was from that first Virginia Pro when he got to sit heavier, right? And he hit the 895 on a seven for nine day. Now he's able to have time to get his weight back up. And now we have time to sit heavier for longer. No longer come to 90. I'm telling people, man, like, Petrie's coming in different. It doesn't even matter because I already know. We, we've been down this road before. You can say this and that. People have their thoughts, their doubts, or whatever. But he proved himself this time. He'll do it again in 12 weeks. And um, I'm excited for what he's going to put up. It's going to be I good. I uh I reached out to Brandon to do a podcast, yeah. and he said what he like he's game for a podcast, whether it's preview show, recap show, or you know we do those podcasts like Who's the Goat or what is yeah. what are these top five performances all time. He's like, I'll do any podcast. Don't want to do one myself yeah. talking about worlds until afterwards. So my man world. is locked in. My man yeah. is locked in, and yeah. um, it shows. Like the 93s are so freaking close and stacked 66s as well. We'll talk about the rest of the classes in a second, but my God is the 93s. Like I am so freaking excited to see it. And you know, yeah. somebody's locked in like Brennan never says no. I mean, as yeah. a matter of fact, he still said yes. He just doesn't want to talk about his world, which shows you like he knows he's in a fight. He's not yeah. coming in here. He's confident, but not arrogant. He knows he's in a fight. He knows like I cannot look. This is going to be right to the very last deadlift. This is going to be a battle to the end. And yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. have you felt the vibe different like that? Because I've never got that from Brandon before. This is the top, top, tippy top. Yeah, this is, I mean, I feel like what a lot of y'all are seeing now is kind of the Brandon that I've been experiencing the past year or two anyway. Because you guys know he's kind of took that little hiatus from social media. So I know where he's at. I think it's just the fact that Petrie's at a point where he realizes, look, I can say whatever I want to say. I can do certain things. But until I go to Worlds and I just do it on the world stage, it like not that he's invalidating himself, but he's like, someone's going to try to find a way to invalidate it. So he's like, I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to work. I'm going to grind. I'm going to do what I did here for PNS. I showed up and I got it done. I'm going to show up at the Worlds, get it done. Then I'm going to say whatever I want to say. Because at that point, you can't take it. You can't talk about the judging or this or that. I did on the world stage. So I think that's what he's locked into. And I think he's also just excited, man. Like he... With even though it was really cool to see, because even though the prep was rough, like I said, those that last while, those last couple of weeks, right? He just had a confidence about it. Like he's like, he's like, look, man, even though I've been able to touch this or that, like I've still been putting the work, I've still been pushing the accessories, I've been locked in when I need to. Like it's like I feel strong, I feel confident, and it's like, and it's it's this thing where I like, and I was telling him like, I'm like, bro, if we can do this with this little amount of time, we have to feel good. Don't give us three months. So I think he's locked into that level where he's like, he's just confident. He's just ready to like, let the work do the talking for him. So it's going to be good. And I think it'll be better too, because I feel like anything he says or talks about before worlds, it's like kind of maybe going to be one ear at the other, but when he goes and does it, and then y'all have that pocket. I'm looking forward to listening to that one. I think that's going to be, right. it's going to be good. I, the only thing that I'll miss out on is trying to hype world with sound bites yeah but i do yeah. i like i mean you know this is what i you you see what i'm doing with russ and perk already hyping that those i don't know if those guys are going to clash anytime soon but on the flip side i also know when you're the athlete hyping sound bites and pressure it's tough as well i get yeah. it and i want to reiterate he was like i'll come on the podcast i just don't want to go in on on worlds right uh, you want me on the podcast talking about whatever Let's do it. Uh, he, yeah. Brennan is is approachable and, you know, a guy as you're going to ask for. We get along yeah. right in. We did a video. I can't wait till it drops. Um, with Powerlifting America, where we're at the casino. And Petrie's got some, like, shades on. Actually, you know what? I won't ruin it. But it is hilarious, dude. Yeah. And Powerlifting America made the video about Team USA. And uh, Team USA come to the Worlds. And we got a couple members over there. Megan Hurlburt was there. Yeah. And um, we'll see when that podcast drops. Uh, let's move into the 105s. Ashton came in, heard rumors he might be injured a little bit. He wasn't going to be 100%. Most people didn't think he would necessarily need to be. But he 
unofficially broke the world record with um, 941. I'm assuming that's no coincidence. It's uh, yeah. it's the unofficial world record for the IPF stage and is showdown with Anatoly Novopismani. How did his prep go? I'm guessing he wasn't a hundred percent and, uh, but more than enough to get it done. Yeah. So pretty much immediately post nationals, um, he was already feeling a little bit banged up. We tried a slightly differing approach to his first block of the off season to kind of see, okay, what type of volume can you kind of handle and tolerate? It was just a little bit too much, not just due to the volume itself, but also like he's just going to do a lot of life transitions as he always is, you know, he's getting his PhD, he's in the military. He's his physical testing, I believe will finally be done over the next couple of weeks, which will be good. So we can actually let his weight get back up. That's why he weighed in even lighter too, is because the constant running physical testing, he bought his first house, things like that. So um, life variables just weren't great for recovery. Uh, but by the time we were like eight weeks out, we had actually adjusted his programming down just to training three days a week. So we were benching three times a week, only squatting once a week, only pulling once a week uh, and adjusting. The good news is in doing that, we found a structure that we think, OK, we actually think this is going to be better for you because such a big part of it for Ashton is if I can stay healthy, if I can recover and even if I'm only hitting the big lifts a certain amount of times, but I can push that accessory volume, I'll get stronger. So. Ironically, it's kind of a blessing in disguise because this format we have now, I think, is actually going to be a lot better going in the world. But pretty much, yeah, he was, you know, a lot of pain, discomfort, especially with his back, his lower back and mid-upper back. Uh, started to manage to kind of get things to be a little bit more tolerable about eight weeks out. And then the final block going into it was the healthiest he had felt since that point. So our goal for this was come in, do enough to win, obviously. Um, that's the main goal, do enough to win. But we want to come in healthy and we want to leave healthy so that we can feel better, which we were able to do that successfully. So the goal for us going in was if we can win on seven attempts, we want to do that. The bench was feeling great, so like we'll still take three attempts there, try to take two attempts on the squat, and try to take two attempts on the pool um, and be where we need to be. And basically by the – by the uh, after his opener, by the the, the last – it's cool to be at this point with Ashley. We've been working together for years now. He's like, just like, he's like, load whatever you think is best. I'll trust and I'll get it done. So I loaded exactly what he needed to uh, beat the world record total by that, by that key level. So. And, and the game plan, if, if knowing that he's banged up and you want to be a hundred percent so that you could get the ball moving for the world championships or yeah. going that third squat, finishing for him relatively, relatively late, heavy enough to lock in a win and start building the base, but lower than he needs. Lower yes. than he's capable to not aggravate. And then again, he came out, did not take the last deadlift, and yeah. kind of, thank you very much. We're all yeah. good here. I thought that was a good idea, especially given the fact that he's injured. And the way that you ended off with 941 was a nice little... Nice little touch to it, yeah. Yeah, a once, little once again, once again, I've got the priorities. Priority number one was win. Priority number two was it possible win on just seven attempts. And then priority number three was still beat the world record total. Just, just to make a statement, right? Like, right. hey, I'm not 100%, but here's what I did. Obviously, if, if after that squat, for example, if I think things would have been too banged up towards like, okay, we can secure the win, but I don't want to risk going over the total and making things worse, I wouldn't have done it. But based upon how things were moving, I knew we'd be pretty set for it. And we had third attempts planned for the squat just in case too. Like I said, like, I don't ever underestimate anybody. Like I can look at the numbers, look at things like, you know, like with Mikey Davis being there and say, okay, let's make sure that we're smart, secure and things. I even told Ash, I said, look, if our second moves in such a way to where we feel alive, we feel strong, we feel healthy, and we can take a little more on a third, just to take it even easier on the bench of deadlift, we will. But based upon the second mood, I was like, okay, we're good. We've got more, but we're, we're, we're just going to leave it there for now. So it's, it's a, it's a tough negotiation, man, to get your guy out of there without re-aggravating. I mean, three months is yeah. some time, but Three months yeah. is not a lot of time if you're injured. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 And that's why it worked out because I was like, okay, this is the best we've felt since nationals. We need to just go in here, compete, and stay healthy. I'm like, if we leave this healthy, we're good. We're smooth sailing. Like, we're over it now. Let's not re-aggravate anything, right? And even though he has some days where he kind of like, you know, felt a little bit of aches and pains, nothing actually for the injury itself back. Like, he's good. He's feeling the healthiest he's felt in a long time. So we're ready to kind of build that momentum for sure. Yeah, hopefully both guys being – um, Ashton and Anatoly 100%. Anatoly wasn't 100% at Sheffield. He wasn't terrible. He came within, if he got his last deadlift, he would have done 841 as well. So he wasn't, he's done 840 obviously, so he wasn't like totally off, but he he was roughed up. And I remember going into Sheffield thinking, I mean, behind the scenes, I was talking to people like, I hope he's not showing up in and just because, hey, I got the invite. This is an amazing experience. Why would I not go? But B, well below 
I, I wasn't sure who he's going to be. And I saw him in the warm up room. He doesn't speak English, but Gustav actually speaks a little bit of Russian. And I asked him through Gustav, like, I thought you were injured. That's the rumor. And you're, the weights you're hitting are lower than we're used to seeing. And he's like, oh, I'm injured. He's like, I'm just, we're going to see what happens. Yeah. And he ended up within his last, his last deadlift would have broke the world record. So he's, we'll see. I hope he's hundred percent. This has been a showdown that uncharacteristically, we talked about last time you were on, uncharacteristically, Anatoly was calling out Ashton kind of sort of. I do think the question was worded in a way that he had to, if I'm honest. Yeah. I yeah. know how to do that yeah, with questions yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. I know how to get the sound bites. I think he was I think he was teed up for a good sound bite, but they got it. And he was like, We'll see what Ash can do at the world stage, some travel, world level calls. And I'm excited. I think Ashton's definitely the favorite though. He's a stronger guy. He's the strongest yeah. guy in the room. But yeah. but at least we'll see what we get. I just want both guys to be at least as close to hundred percent as possible. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think, I mean, that's the thing too, man, that I've been, you know, I, you know, working with people like, you know, Ash and Bob, Petrie, Jamar, uh, McLean Carrington, a lot of these bigger dudes, something that I've been trying to emphasize with some of my content to a lot of the coaches, like, hey, listen, when, when they're lifting this much weight this frequently, you don't have to go crazy all the time. Like yeah. most of your work can be some max touch just heavy enough to build your momentum towards the end and let yourself reset. And that's a big thing that's led to a lot of successes. I still see a lot of people where the way they're training is they're almost still training as if they're like an intermediate level lifter, right? Where it's like, okay, I can push it hard for sure. Every three, four weeks to be good. It's like, nah, man, not when you're throwing up seven, eight, 900 pounds on these lifts. You know what I mean? So hopefully, you know, Hopefully, hopefully, people are like kind of paying attention to that, and they, and they are showing the penalty. That's that's what we want, and that's what Ashton wants. Like I said, he he wants that direct head to head. He wants that battle. Um, and, he, and and in general, man, I just you know we we're all passionate about this. Put a lot of work into this. You don't want anyone to show up injured. Like it's it's a lot of yeah. work. So yeah. And the hype has been going on too long for a letdown. Yeah. yeah. If you know, yeah. let's see, let's see both these guys go over the world record. Let's see him go head to head, and then. We see what the heck who who goes to Sheffield, who gets wild carded or whatever. Yes, yeah. it's, it's been going yeah. to it, it'll be surreal. I mean, it's been yeah. years. I've been saying I want to see Ashton at Worlds with USA across his chest. I've been yeah. saying this since like it's something people have really been looking forward to. I was talking to uh, Johnny Candido about this a couple of days ago. He's like, man, people have been waiting for this to happen again for years. Years. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll be cool. And, and that's another thing. Like I said, we talked about this last time, but even with Anatoly, I like the way he did it. Like it, he, he, like it was a call out that was in a way that was like, not, it wasn't distasteful or anything like that. Like it, to me, it's the only way you can respond when you're in the current champ and someone that's objectively stronger on paper is coming to challenge you. Like, it, yeah. like it's, it's the perfect way to respond. You're not backing down from it, but you're also not, not saying anything unrealistic or stupid either. I really like the way he went about it. Truly. It's true. I, I, I'm pretty sure he was, put on the spot with a question about yeah, it yeah, yeah. you have to reply and yeah. to your point he knows all right i mean clearly ashton's the stronger guy but so what am i gonna say well the only thing i can say and i gotta be say it with confidence say it with my chest out that's all well fine and dandy you're doing it in your own nation you got to do it the world's with the world level with all the different intangibles i've done it time and time and again you haven't that's fact yeah and Ashton's I'm looking probably, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he said, probably, and I'm looking forward to. It. He said, I'm looking forward yeah, to the challenge. That, yeah, that's yeah. the part that I love. It's like he's not he's not discounting Ashton's strength, but it's like, hey, you have to do it on a turf that I'm used to, and I'm looking forward to seeing you come and challenge me. So I mean, you can't you can't get mad at that. They can only fire yeah. you up. So yeah, both him and Ashton are kind of the same like that. Like yeah, um, you know, it'll it'll be good. It'll be a good showdown. Another one. Obviously, let's move up a weight class. And talk about uh, Bob. Now, surprising for me for Bob, and surprising to Bob as well, was how light he weighed in. I actually yeah. did an interview with Bob with yeah. White Lights Media. I'll play it for you because there's a couple things I'm going to ask you about weight. And then at the end, White Lights Media asked him a question. He gave an answer. I was shocked. The answer he gave. I don't know if this is off the cuff shooting from the hip after all things were said and done that he, he was thinking or if he had spoken to you about it beforehand. I'll play this. I'm going to play this right now and uh, get your input. One sec here. 
Let me know if you could hear this. Hopefully you can. Can you hear that? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I can't hear it, but I can see the I can see the the words. And I watch this too. So yeah. One sec here then. If you can't hear it, let me um just so our listeners can. Yeah. Like, how do I it's a... Uh... Advanced sharing options. Sorry for the delay. You know what I might do real quick? I think if you, uh, because the full thing's on the YouTube. Right? All right. Sorry. What did you time. plan on weighing in at, and what do you plan on weighing in at moving forward? I did not expect to weigh in at 106. I ate to my heart's content this week, probably in a 500 calorie surplus. So I thought I was coming in big, 108, 109. But the plan is still, the intent is 120, and I'm going to have to try my best. But if I literally cannot, I'm going to have to see Asher Dana at 105. You came close to a 990.5. What was your goal total here? And what is your goal for World Championships, given that Sheffield is based off of records? Today, my goal was 1,000, 100%, nothing less. I ended up taking the lower end squat, the lower end bench. The goal for Worlds is absolutely 1,000 again. I'm not saving anything for Sheffield's. That is not who I am. The goal is to win, because that's what Worlds is about. But I'm all about pushing my totals. You win the 120s at Worlds, and you're still not very heavy. Do you think you'd qualify for Sheffield and then drop down to the 105s to beat the world record like you've seen that the women do? I'm not going to lie. That's a 70% chance. Like, if I really can't... No, I'm so serious. I, I would want Ash to win it, so I don't want to do 105. Not saying that I can beat him on any day. It'll. It's always going to be 50-50 between us. But... I'm going to try my best to fill out 120, and if I can't, hey, I guess I'm going to be a 105 again. Whoa, my man. So, all right. Interesting stuff here. Takeaways. He, he, he wasn't gaining weight. Um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about you must have been aware he wasn't gaining weight or was it a drop-off near the competition? Yeah. How was that? No, it was a drop-off. So he, we were chilling around like that one between 107.5 and 108 mark. We were really in a good spot there. Um, I think one thing that did happen, because this happened with, with a few people I noticed, with the, depending on where they came from, like like in the U.S. when they traveled over there, even I was experiencing this, because I dropped weight, actually, because I had a pretty scale, and I checked my weight, and I dropped weight while I was over there as well. I think part of it was um, it just seemed like drier, like we were kind of like losing, we weren't going on to as much water stuff like that. So I, so this is well, going into it because Bob is a machine. He counts all his weights, keeps his sheets built out, stuff like that. So we were chilling, like I think like one of some of us, like our lowest, like one of eight. So we were very shocked when he came in uh, only around like that 106 mark. But with that being said, the weight that we have gained has been a very, very slow and, and steady. I mean, we pretty much weighed in, um, like sales like right around like, for even though he was like supposed to be a 110, but right around like 105, right? So the weight that has been gained, the mass has been gained, it's very slow, very steady over time because that's just the best way we can get it on. Plus, Bob wants to keep his body composition point. So right now, like we talked about a little bit, the goal is hey, we can get if we can be 108, like by 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 worlds. That's cool. Obviously, we're not expecting to fill out 120. I don't think Bob at any point is wanting to fully fill out 120 anyway. No. But I think long term he would like to get to at least be chilling around 110. Because Bob's big goal has always been I want to get as big and as strong as possible, keep challenging the different dudes like you know, first one challenge Petrie and Nation and Alondell. Um See, so, yeah, there's no like you know we weren't spending weight in that light. Plus, he just feels more confident when he's weighing in heavier. So that's still going to be the goal. Well, obviously, uh, in regards to you know if we get to a point where we just it's just still hard to to get to that weight, we're still weighing like 106, 107. And yeah, that's that's I mean, we've already talked about it. Simply, it's something where he may have to like you know may have to consider okay, well, it makes more sense for for Sheffield, right? And Bob being Bob, and because of kind of what we want to do from the team perspective of kind of like coming in with each weight class, Bob might be like, okay, well, I can still do this much over the world record total, even I'm super light, and he might still go with that. But it's one of those things where once we get through worlds, we have to sit down and talk about it, kind of discuss it. So, yeah, nothing he said there was, was surprising or something. We had to kind of went back and forth on and talk about before.
or even including the, because <laughs> I asked them too, I said, I said, look, man, in Africa, so we can kind of do whatever we want. I said, but of course, you know, you have to account for the, um, um, you know, like the total and stuff like that, and the record total and like that. And I was like, I was like, so I said, for you, I said, and I told them, I said, I said, you being you, I was like, <laughs> obviously on paper, not setting it too high is smart, but I said, well, what are you going to want to do? And, you know, Pretty much his response to you is what he said to me. So it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't know. You know, I don't like going back, man. So, you know. It's crazy. Like, yeah, he's okay. So <laughs> it makes it, it makes sense if he just goes to blow up the record at 120 um, and push it as close to a thousand kilos. If not, take it to a thousand kilos. If he's particularly going to 105, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? He could do both. If he's thinking, because in that video, it kind of surprised me. He said, as of now, things change. It's a moving target. But he said, as of now, 70% 105 at Sheffield. 70%. Now that's, if all of a sudden he starts gaining weight and he's like, oh my God, I love how this feels. That can change. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Yeah. But 70%, it kind of makes sense. If he shows, he could do both now, if he does that. He could go to 120s, go all out. Because he's not going to Sheffield as a 120. So it's like, who cares? I'm going to blow this up as much as possible. Shoot it. If I become the first 120 on the world stage to get 1,000 kilos, perfect. Let me do some stuff like that. Let me have fun. Then I drop the 105, so it doesn't matter. I get like a, a pass on this. I get to eat my food. You know, I, I get to have it all. Go to 105, have a showdown with Ashton. And in terms of if we're going to get greedy here, Ashton versus Anatolia at Worlds, and then let's turn around and have Ashton versus Bob at Sheffield. Oh my goodness, sir. That would be cha world champion, conceivably, Ashton being a world champ. Let's just say that for this hypothetical, they're both world champions. There's nothing like at Sheffield when they have world reigning world champion versus reigning world champion. That's just, that's what Gara and Leah Bavwa did, and then I'll go, obviously Agatha joined the party. But like those showdowns are amazing for viewers, and you know, like SBD and Sheffield will be like, "Oh hell yeah!" Like, why would we not want world champ versus world champ? Um, it would be, I mean, for you, I don't know how you feel about it. If you're like, "Shit, guys, I kind of like divide and conquer," but yeah. I don't know how yeah. do you feel about it all. I mean, for me, man, it's very simple. I. I have I have two very general coaching principles. The first one is treat each client like the only one you have in terms of like how you approach things, the programming, their goals, stuff like that. And the second one is I'm happy my clients are happy. I can have my own personal goals, right? Um, but even with Bob going to 120 and Ashley being 105, because we could have easily switched those, right? But what I did was I asked for their I said, say, listen, y'all both of them say weight class cool. I said, obviously me personally, I like the idea of having on different ones and going in there and taking more world spots and more precision Sheffield spots. I said, but um, what makes most sense for you? Ashton, of course, with the with the, um, the physical testing stuff he has to do, it's like, look, my weight's only going to be able to get up so heavy right now anyway, so that makes sense. And then Bob's personal goal is, I want to get as big and strong as possible, so it works out that way. So right now, that's still what I feel is best, and I do feel like with just even more time, we, you know, we boosted Bob's calories again, so he's eating even more, like we should be able to get that weight to where it needs to be. But if by the time Worlds comes around and it's done and Bob decides, yeah, this is what I want to do, that's what he wants to do. It's my it's my job as the coach to maximize my clients' goals, not so much impose my will and my goals upon them, right? And at the end of the day, if they're both in Sheffield, they're both in Sheffield, you know what I mean? Um, and even as far as how placing goes, there's nothing to say that that changes the way that they would place either, you know what I mean, necessarily. So for me, it's one of those things where I'm kind of I'm kind of good either way. I think I think on paper I just like the idea of Amish coming in a different weight class, but I mean it, it it has to make sense, right? And that's the thing about Bob. Like as much as Bob loves his goals, but that Bob is always still very objective on the day as needed. Um, like it's funny, Bob. Like like so many of my limits are ones that are so locked in and this and that. And Bob is locked in, but Bob and I can be having full conversations about stuff during the meet, like just talking through. He's comparing old side by side videos and stuff like that. Um, so it's one of those things where like, even for worlds, right? Like, even though it's like, Hey, the, the goal will still be a thousand at the end of the day, I know Bob's going to do what he needs to do to ensure the win first and foremost. And if it's like, eh, I'll do 990 or 995 and then maybe push for a thousand, like, cool. Now, mind you, if he's just feeling on and he knows he can take a thousand worlds, he will do it. I have no doubt about that. But what I like about that is that just means if he's doing that, 
and he does stay 120, he's like, I'm going to push it even further than that, which, you know, for a lot of people sounds crazy, but I mean, it's Bob. Bob does Bob things, so. Bob is an entirely unique individual. Yeah. This dude, yeah, he's talked about it. He he wants showdowns, and he doesn't care where he finds them, what titles are on the line, yeah. what it means for in a global sense, or what it will mean in He's just in the moment. This is what I want. Literally, if he stays 120 for Sheffield, he'll still blow up worlds with the biggest total possible. It's like, why would you yeah. do that, though? And Bob's like, because I'm there on the day. And yeah. tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe I blow yeah. a hamstring leading it to Sheffield, and that was my chance to blow up the 120 record. So I'm going to blow up. the Penn yeah. is the same way. Penn has said, yeah. I don't hold back, my friend. Uh, tomorrow's not promised. I've yeah. had those days where you're yeah. plotting six months ahead and yeah. it never comes for a million reasons. He's like, no, no, today's yeah. the day. It's the world championships. Uh, time to blow it up. Yeah. I mean, you just got to think about it too, man. Like, look, Sheffield and the money, all that's great. But at the end of the day, man, to say that you hit a thousand kg total at worlds, at the yeah. world level, mind you. That, no one's got that, anything that, to say. That, yeah. That's going to mean so much to where it's like, oh, but you could have like, and for the, like I said, Bob's the type of person who's like, not only do I get to say I did this, but now I've set the goalpost for myself even higher. I've set even higher. I mean, that's why he's called Super Saiyan, right? That's what they do, right. man. Super Saiyan Bob, they, they work hard, they push through, they want to keep getting better. But that's what Bob does. That's why I'm not I'm not even remotely surprised by any of it. Like I said, we've talked about it. And, and even when we first talked about the potential pulling back, you can just see at least like a, like a bad taste in his mouth. He's like, ah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you weren't done your sentence. He had a look on his face. You're like, all right, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, I, I can already, already tell. This is... I already know, man. Like that's that's one thing. I, I I know my lifters. I know what their mentality is like. I know what their what their what their mindset is towards each thing. And it's like I, I work with it. I adapt, and, and we make it happen. I just feel like, hey, if that happens, that just means you gotta ensure me that you're gonna hit even more than a thousand at Sheffield. That's, that's it. <laughs> for for well, first off, uh, just from the Team USA perspective, I know like Matt and Susie and them. It behooves Team UFC to have. Ashton and Bob split two different weight classes because a gold for anyone listening, I know you already know, but for anyone listening, a gold medal will net you 12 points, silver medal, nine, nine, and then eight for bronze and so on and so forth down the rankings. So if you have two lifters like Bob and Ashton, yes, if they're in the same weight class, one wins gold, one wins silver, no matter what, like conceivably, but it's, 12 points and nine points for team USA and you yeah. don't get a 120. You don't get to send a 120 yeah. for team USA. They would be like, let's split these guys up. Yeah. 12 points, 12 points, 12 points. Let's, you know, this is how you're going to sweep. This is how you're exactly. going to, so it makes sense like that. Exactly. And then for, for Sheffield, um, yeah, I guess we just got to see what Bob ends up weighing in. The thing yeah. with like Rondell is coming. We don't know when. And I know at one point it was a while ago Bob, I forget which show when I had him on, but he was super hyped into Rondell because he had just come off of clashing with Ashton. He had gotten it. He had whetted his palate and, and satiated that appetite for that showdown with Ashton. It was hyped. They did it. And he was kind of on to the next one. And it was Rondell. Oh my God, Rondell. Like Rondell's, there's questions whether or not Rondell is pound for pound king and not perk. It, because people were saying, did Rondell do to the 120s? What Perk did to the 74s. You could maybe argue that. It's it's not clear. It's a sports debate. Like there's no it's never black and white, but you could argue it. You could argue it. Um the only, but he's a guest lifter, stuck in a weird position, so he's not getting the credit right. he deserves. Right. But I could see where Ron he was like, Oh my god, if Rondell is potentially the guy, you could argue Rondell is the king. Either Perk or Rondell. If I have a shot at the king head to head. Oh my God! For a guy like Bob, yeah. who wants that kind of he he and, leans in, and that's part of it too. Of why like I mean like so for Wills, it just makes sense to split them anyway. We all agree to that as a team, but it's part of why I truly do think if Bob gets like one hundred eight, one nine, one ten, he'll stay there because it's more time to build, more time to get stronger, and I know he still wants. Them. Like I'm talking, like he still wants. To, I mean, the, the whole reason, look, the whole reason he switched was because of Rondell <laughs> because he's, mm. he was really waiting and being like, okay. 
what is Rondell going to do? Is Rondell going to stay USPL? If he does, I'll stay. If Rondell's going to switch, then I switch and do my thing. And the timing kind of works out. Obviously, like, you know, on a personal level, it sucks the whole thing going on with Rondell not being able to, like, come back quite yet. But the cool thing is, I told Bob, I said, yeah, but this gives you your time to do Nationals, do Worlds, do Sheffield, run the gauntlet, and kind of keep building your weight. So that when he does come, you can be at your best version of yourself to yeah. battle it out. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I think if the, the only reason, the only reason that I see Bob truly like going down flat out would be if I just can't gain the weight and I can't justify being just a kilo over the bottom class. That's that's the only reason I think that would happen as of right now. Things can change, but as of right now, that's why I think he's probably going to end up staying with the bunch of And that's why, uh, that's what I was going to say is at the time when I was asking him and he had already satiated the Ashton battle and he had, I think he might have overestimated how easy it might be to gain weight. And yeah. um, fast forward eight months later, whatever, he might be like, and your point is exactly that. That time waiting for Rondell, he could conceivably be gaining more and more and more weight. So it's he's never going to be the same size as Rondell, but mitigate it. And yeah. it's like, oh, perfect timing. When you're moving up from 105 to 120, 15 kilos, it's a ridiculous it's crazy. So yeah. the more time, the better. It actually, yeah. and then when they clash, Bob's got a world title. Bob's got a Sheffield appearance. Bob's got the, it's just a bigger, bigger clash. Yeah. But on the flip side, you can't predict the future. And if it yeah. doesn't end up like that, and it ends up, my body, like 106 ish, 107 is probably where I'm capped out healthy wise. Like I could throw on chubby weight. That's not going to yeah. bump my total much. Then. You have to at least, at least then he knows. He's like, look, yeah. give this go, you know, and you could, you could, because I'm telling you what, if at the time when we first talked, he was, his appetite was satiated with Ashton, I think we're all getting a little hungry for another one again now. I think after Worlds, Ashton wins, Bob wins, champion versus champion, I think we're hungry for it all over again yeah. at, at Sheffield. So, from an entertainment way. perspective, you can't lose either way. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah, true. yeah. You know, I mean, it's like if we get Bob versus Ashton again, that's always fun. Um, if we get it where let, let's say Bob does stay with him and he does do a thousand, it's like, is he really going to turn around <laughs> and beat that again in Sheffield, right? And then potentially battle against Rondell. Either way, I don't think you can lose. So it'll be it'll be interesting. Um, my my hope, and this is more so even apart from him versus Ashton around. My hope, though, just for Bob, for his super personal goals, like I said, Bob wants to be the biggest, strongest he can be, is that we can get the weight trending in the right direction. Because, you know, originally, remember when Bob first started up under me, he was a 93. So we've been yeah. able to gain the weight over time. It's just, but the more weight you gain, the more you're trying to keep it healthy and lean, the harder it gets over time. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. He, he looks good with the shirt off. He by no means is getting chubby. Everyone yeah. does have, like, a, a maxed out body weight where it's like, look, at more than body. this you're not going to be too happy with yourself more yeah. than this. This yeah. is probably, but we'll have to see in um, when we get there. And in terms of Ashton is Ashton, what is his future in terms of how much longer he wants to do it? You hear rumors either which way is he like, I'm sticking around. Cause this is what might influence Bob as well. If Ashton is leaning towards I'll do, I'm going to do worlds, get a world title, uh, Sheffield world games like that's check 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 those are all the things that eluded him thus far in his career injuries whatever he's he's got a lot of things going on in life do you know what his overall plans are is he looking for his final run and if that's the case I think that'll more heavily sway Bob who's like my friend if you're eyeing the finish line we need to sort this why not do it at Sheffield because Rondell's not going anywhere and I could, oh, I got plenty of time to gain weight. Um, do, you, do you know, or is it still kind of up in the air with Ashton? No. So as of our last official talk about it, um, that's why it's funny. Anytime we talk about it, we, we call it phases. Um, <laughs> P- PLA Nats was phase one. Uh, Worlds will be phase two. Sheffield, phase three. And the World Games, phase four. So four total phases left. Um, as of right now, Ashton's like, with, if he gets through all that and he goes to the World's Game and assuming he does, wins all of these things, he's like, I think I might be good. So I think I'm going to say, unless something else comes up or a new challenge, something comes up to kind of sway me to be like, okay, let's give it a couple more years. Then, yeah, as of right now, that's kind of that's kind of the, the finish line that's laid out for right now. Yeah, and again, these are moving goalposts because I know right. some lifters, when they get there, they're like, you know what? 
Yeah. Maybe I got one or two more years, and that's fair enough too. But I think that will help Bob out if yeah. Bob's thinking Rondell's not leaving. As a matter of fact, Rondell's just getting back. He's just getting started. Rondell has a legacy. Rondell feels like, man, I missed out on my potential legacy. I got a legacy to build. I think that might help Bob thinking, all right, if Ashton's leaving, because Ashton won their clash. Bob might be thinking, I wouldn't mind getting that back. At Sheffield, with the world watching, everyone's watching Sheffield. That would, and I'm sure SVD wouldn't be mad at a mega showdown between two world champions like that. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I I would. I'd like to see it, but I guess we'll have to see how it all plays out. S- speaking of guys in weight cuts, etc. So what's going on with our little chubby friend Wasker? How did he get? What's, there were rumors. He was like 250 pounds. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we got up, we definitely got up near like that 70 kilo mark and whatnot. Dude. Like that, that, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, basically, man, like the long story short is what see, so, you know, I'm talking about how Bob is a machine when it comes to nutrition. The only client I've ever worked with, well, coaching nutrition only, regardless, that even matched that was Wasker. So, going into nationals last year, man, was locked in, dialed in, perfect. I'm talking, I'm not talking just like, oh, everything's in range. No, I'm talking to the T, macros, calories. Perfect, not over, under, nothing like that. Read these day. Oh, I'm not going to get greedy. Read Perfectly as laid out. Did that go into nationals? Did that go into worlds? After worlds, um, you know, he he, um, he opened up a gym. So that's that's each part started opening up the gym. Still has his job he has to do. Still has, like, you know, the wife and his kids he got to take care of. And he, right. I think just from being so locked in for so long, he just kind of started going off the rails, man. Like, he got to a point where at one point it was like, you know, like, like you know, Coach Steve is trying to be like, yo, what's going on with the weight? He's not really talking to him. He's missing check-ins with me and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, no, man's that's just, never man's a good just, sign. Yeah, that's man's, never just, a good man's sign. just eating, man. But then eventually, like, you know, when we realized, like, hey, man, look, if you want maybe potential a Sheffield wild card spot, it's not going to matter if you can't make weight, right? So we're trying to get him locked in. He's kind of locked in and stuff like that. Um, and the weight's kind of coming down, but not quite at the rate that we need to. Because once again, we're starting off from around there, like at 70 kg <laughs> mark, trying to come down, right? But I, um, no, I, I remember like it was me, T, Steve, and I would go on a call, right? And I told Steve, I said, hey, man, I'll do, let me do most of the time. You know, I'm the nutrition coach, and like, you know, I, if he takes anything the wrong way, I'd rather be towards me than you. Y'all got to do do. But I just told him, I said, listen, man, where the weight is at currently right now, where things are, I was like, you have two options. You can pretty much, get ready to just mentally prepare to move up the next weight class. And maybe the next year or two, you can get to the place you were in that because you are now. I said, or we're going to do crazy extreme stuff. And you're going to have to give me a hundred percent effort into that extreme stuff to, to make it work. I'm talking man, we were eating like freaking like sub like 1500 calories. Um, really like no repeat days. Steve had to take out some of his uh, accessory work just to, help try to lose, come back on some mass like that. Like, like my man did a bodybuilding prep. Like, I'm not exaggerating, especially when you look at, like, by DEXA scan, like, what his body fat percentage was and his total lean mass and how much we're having to lose. Like, it, it easily the most extreme cut I've ever had to have a power to do. And he had to really lock in those those last those last weeks. But I mean, he did it. You know, I'm talking, like, cardio every single day. Like, cardio every day, very low calories. It was It was crazy. But, but he did it, man. And, and the strength he maintained with that was insane. Now, I told him <laughs> after he won, I said, hey, man, quit work. I'm proud of you. I said, please don't ever do this again. Please, I was man. like, I was like, like, like let's do it. Because the original plan was to repeat him up slowly so we can. And that's what we're going to try to do this time around. But it's like we didn't get a chance to do that. Like, he, because not only did he eat so much, he by this kid, the amount of muscle he built in that time of being that heavy. Like, his body was just hungry for it. So, yeah, it was, it was an insane cut, man. Truly, truly crazy. I think Steve and I plan on doing like a full breakdown of the whole thing because of just how insane it is when you, when you look at the days and numbers and the details. It's, it's wild. I, I got Wasker actually later today on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, um, me and Wasker, I, I love having Wasker on the podcast because he's first off a great storyteller. His background story is phenomenal. And he was talking about in previous episodes, wanting to popularize the 59 kilo class and due to the 59s with Penna did to the 66s yeah. um, and, and kind of bring, cause Oscar has, he's got a look to him. That's all to himself. He's, yeah. he looks like he lifts. He takes his shirt off. He's jacked. He's ripped. Um, he's charismatic. He's an amazing storyteller. And he's strong as hell, and he's got a presence on that platform. Even when, I, I mean, in terms of discipline, he made the weight, though. 
And, yeah, and yeah. You, you, let, like, let, me be, let me be clear. I mean, first of all, I feel like the reason it kind of went off the rails was because when you're disciplined for so many months and you're so locked in, people don't get it, man. Like, I always tell people, if you want to take your life from however level of difficulty and make it twice as hard, open up a gym. I've seen it happen time and time again. It's stress. It's, it's, it's a lot. You got a lot to account for. You got to still do your day job. But like, yeah, man, the day, I mean, like, like the exact calorie, 1450 calories. That's what we had this man on going into this. So imagine you're only 1450 calories. You're doing cardio every single day. You're still having to push your lips and get strong for Like, yo, when it comes to discipline, like Waster is that guy. He just, you know, had a, had a, had a moment or a few weeks, moments of kind of going off the rails with me. And at the end of the day, it made for a great story, right? So you came, you came back and locked in. <laughs> and not only that, to Wasker's credit, he that total he was looking for that eluded him at Worlds. Had he hit it at Worlds, he'd be at Sheffield. And yeah. that was like the demon that was plaguing him because we had talked about it leading into Worlds that he wants to popularize that weight class. What he could do to that weight class, a guy like him, his background story, his ability to tell a story, even when he's on the platform and he hits a lift, throws his arms up, he could be contending against himself and he puts on a show. Very few yeah. people have that kind of charisma. Yeah, He's Dude, got star quality. I mean, you were there, man, his third deadlift. The, the, yeah. You could feel the energy in the room, man. Like that, Dog. that was one of those moments where you had everybody standing up, everybody had phones out recording. Like they was, it was crazy, man. Like, like it's, it, it's electric. Like we've, we've all been there. We've been there for those moments in crowd thing where it's a certain lift or like it, it it's like, and, and this isn't to like compare to weird weight, but it's kind of like, like, okay, when you see Ray, like, you know, squat a thousand pounds. So it's just certain things when a lifter does, it's like the entire room is captivated. The image's on. That's what that was, that deadlift. Man. That was, that was crazy. There's that a storyline to him now. Like yeah. he, that number, it was the demon he needed to slay because he missed Sheffield because he didn't hit that number of worlds. And going into this meet, he had such a spread on the other 59s, but that number gave it a storyline and a purpose. And when it came down to the last deadlift, everyone knew you you hit this, you slay those demons. And for him to hit it, walk off the stage and embrace his family. And when you know his background story about his family, he, how he grew yeah. up with an abusive father who was alcoholic, living in the streets, getting... Um, you know, secretly brought over to the U.S. and like the whole, it was crazy background story. And to know where he's come from to where he is now and for him to have that storyline and know he killed himself to made weight and still had the strength to hit an all-time best and slay that demon. And it's a prelude to him having to do it now at the World Championships oh, and, and possibly go to Sheffield, which him at Sheffield, I'm telling you, his road to Sheffield video will be a can't miss. Yeah. It'll be a can't miss. Pop, if anyone listening hasn't heard his KOTL podcast when he tells his background story, phenomenal. Like, I mean, the guys are an amazing storyteller. And what makes it even better, at World's Waiting Forum, Fedoshenko's coming back from Russia. All indications were at like 90% sure. He'll be lifting under, I don't know what kind of, it won't be the Russian flag, but... 90% sure anyways. We'll see. It's This isn't an announcement. It's a strong guess leaning towards. We think some Russians will be back. And this is what he wanted. Wasker said, for me to popularize 59th, I need a rival. Nothing better than the GOAT 59. Nothing better than, like, the guy is back. And I need to go to Sheffield. We're the biggest platform everybody's watching. So I can be like, we're here. And I could tell my story. And yeah. um, the, the, the stage is being set for young Wasker. So it was before he leaves 60 or 59, sorry, and goes 66, this was needed. Like he could leave. He won the world title, but I'm glad everything worked out. Yeah. 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 No, it was, it was cool, man. It was good. And I even, I told him that too, even when it all first went down and he was like, I mean, cause you could tell, you could see on the stage when I was telling him like the reality of the hey, this is where we're at right now. That's what we need. You could see like the weight of it and the, the disappointment too in himself of like, man, I let things get so bad to where like now this might be out of my reach. But it's moments like that that can either make you crumble or make you rise. And he, he rose to the right. occasion, man. And I told him to say, hey, show yourself grace, man. You've been locked in, you're doing a lot. I get it. It's like, but I can't sugarcoat the situation right now. This is where it's at. That's what I need you to do. And he did it, man. Like, you know, we no no one's perfect. We all make mistakes. Sometimes we we put ourselves in circumstances that we that aren't ideal the choices that we make, but it's all about okay, what are you gonna do to respond to it, man? What are you gonna do to get yourself out of it? He he thrived, man. It was it and was came really, up really, big. 
Yeah, it was. He had really one of the best. He had one of the best moments of PA Nats when he hopped off that platform, hugged Easily. his family, and the cameras followed him in. I was talking to the cameraman working for SBDs. Like yeah. I knew that was a moment. He had a roaming camera, yeah. roamed off the platform with him, and got right in there on the family cry. He was like, "Oh my god, I feel almost like this is too personal, but this is so good television." But yeah. it was, uh, it no, was a moment. It, it's awesome. It's and, and that's the cool thing, man. With this full coach and just nutrition only, like, but. You know, obviously, you know, I got, I got that, you know, mad love for Steve to know he was his coach. I got mad love for him, but just being a part of their process for moments like that, like that, yeah. that's why I love coaching. Like whether it's nutrition, it's like you get to be a part of someone's process of truly showing that they are the best they can be. And that's like, you can't, I don't know, man, you can't even describe it for it. Like, like I thank God for it. I thank God for the opportunity to be able to witness and be a part of moments like that. And I'm glad I got to just see it. I'm glad that, like, you know, at that point, Megan was done. And stuff like that. I was able to just be in the audience. Because that's why I went down. I was like, I got to watch this from the audience. Like, you get so used as a coach to watch it for the better. Like, no, I want to see this. I want to feel this energy. It was awesome. Yeah. In that particular competition, um, I think you would have been more stressed than Steve in terms of um, <laughs> like yeah, you're like, we we all right, good, all right. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. yeah. We we made you're all shaking hands after the weigh-in. We made it off the finish line. We made past the finish line. Yeah, now, no, once the, I was telling him and Megan, I was like, oh, because they feel sad. I was like, hey, y'all made weight. I'm yeah, I know I'm those good. two people. I'm you're good. like, wow, I'm good. I'm all chilling. right, I'm chilling. That's that's it. Damn. That's it. That's what the battle was from day one. I was like, it was a battle against the scale. So. Yeah, it is what it is. When you look at Team USA, um, how fired up? First off, how fired up are you when when Jesus made that grab the microphone and was like, "We're doing a clean sweep." He gave that speech. Jesus yeah. is really like finding his voice ever yeah. since like the last couple of years. Ever since winning Sheffield the first Sheffield, this young man is finding his voice, huh? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, when he was doing it live, I recorded, recorded, it, had it on my Instagram. So I know, I got that. Yeah, it was it's it's one of these things, man, where for me, I like I like seeing different people of different backgrounds, different diversity, culture, mentalities, whatever, coming together for a common goal, right? Yeah. And it, and and like I mean, like when he said, like, you know, like like hey, America's coming, we're bringing heat. It's like it's it's cool, man. It's cool to see it. It's like I really do feel I mean, everyone's calling, like, oh, the Avenger, the dream team, like, no, but really though, like if you look at it, like we understand, like you know, some weight class will have more of a battle than others, especially on the women's side. But just still, like the collective team that we're bringing is yeah. is stacked. And of course, you know, it, being being somebody where like you know, where I'm coaching, like you know, I'm coaching one fourth of it. Obviously, a lot of a lot of pride it, it goes into that because like it is, it's it's oh, you're it's coaching one fourth of it. Is that are you one fourth of it? If we look at it, yeah, yeah, because it's uh, it's Megan, Ashton, Bob, Petrie. So, Dude, yeah. that is crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is one of the most stacked. We'll see how it all plays out. Like, dream teams go to Olympics. You got to eat. Like, proof is in the pudding. I get that. Yeah. But, I mean, I had Jonathan Garcia on um, last night, and he was talking about, like, he thinks this could be the team we all look back on. Yeah. And um, to see that, to have one fourth of this team USA, you know, you look back at different years, like that year was solid. That year we had this guy, this girl, whatever. But this year in particular, honestly, when you look like Ash, Bob, Perk, Russ, uh, on the women's side, you got these veterans as well. And like, I don't know, and uh, Jesus, the strongest man of all time. Like you have, it really is a special team. And for you yeah. to be like, look, I got one fourth of this. You're going to yeah. look back at this year and be like, let me tell you about the 2024 Worlds. My first Worlds, yeah. and I had one fourth. Yeah. It's a, how do you feel going into this? Like as a coach, like having one fourth, I'm assuming you have to be going. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm okay, I'd be mean, yeah, gone yeah, if you yeah, weren't. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm going to be there. Like whether, look, whether I'm allowed to, you know, be in the former room or not, basically, I'm, I already told you I'm, I'm there. That's, there's no yeah. way I'm missing out on this. But I – no, it's it's first and foremost, man. For me, always like all the word to God who you know gives me the strength to walk in His presence, strengthens me because my clients do the same thing. It's only by His grace and will that I can even get out of bed in the morning, let alone do what I do. And for me, it's really cool to see, especially with each individual, right? But if I look at things that have led up to this over time, like the ups and downs, the things you learn, the people you connect with, uh, the friends you gain, the friends you lose, whatever it may be. Um, and seeing it lead to this moment, like I said, it, it was one of the, it was one of those moments where instead of just immediately being like, okay, what's next? I already know what's next as well, but I let myself for the week after that just be like, 
wow, thank you, y'all. We're here. Like we're we're here. My my people are putting the work. I'm putting the work. And like we're, we're, the preacher keeps saying it over and over. It's like, man, we did it. Like we did it. It's it's cool. And it's like you know, obviously we still gotta go to the world. We gotta do our thing. But regardless of what happens, like no one can take away what where team craftsmanship is at right now. What we've done right now. Um, so it's 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 surreal, man. It's awesome. I'm I'm very hyped for it. I'm still kind of processing it, to be honest. Like we, every time I think I'm processing it, I'm good. A new edit, a new video comes out, like the, the South American one that came out showing like the whole team. And it's like, oh my gosh, man, this is yeah, this is oh, insane. That video was amazing. This is insane, man. Like, yeah, it's 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 hype, man. I'm I'm excited for it, and I I really do feel like um, I was looking at it and there was potential, like. Even aside from just wins, but in terms of like all podium positions, like dude, like yes, I think this is the strongest team the U.S. has had. Like it's 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 incredible. It's um yeah that for, that video was bonkers. Marshall yeah. messaged me who, who's running the Powerlifting America account and said, "You ready for a collab in like twenty minutes?" And then he showed me the video and I watched it and I was like, "Oh my god, my dude, Marshall's, that was uh, Marshall's the goat, my, man." <laughs> oh my. god. God, my dude. He also did that other video I was talking about with Brendan at the craps tables and stuff. Yeah. You'll see it. It's pretty cool. But um, yeah, he's amazing at what he does. But this this team looks phenomenal. I remember uh, here's uh, something else that's funny. So we're at the craps tables. I'm with them shooting the video. Um, you guys will see it. I won't spoil it. But one of the SVD guys is kind of cute. He's like, "Do you want to do a quick selfie where you take your camera and you're like, yo?" Team USA, we're coming. Be ready. And I was like, my dude, you know I'm not American, right? <laughs> He's, like, oh. <laughs> He's like, I forgot. Because I, yeah. I, I, you can't tell, right? I'm, yeah. I've always had every PA Nats. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm I, I, I do think people do forget very quickly about uh, that. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I'm like, people in Canada will be like, okay, that's too far. That's, yeah. too far. that's <laughs> a little too much. You know, you do their nationals and all the, that's great. But that was, yeah. that was offside. But um, yeah, dude, you're gonna absolutely love Worlds. It's a whole nother experience when people from all over the world are in the same hotel, the same restaurants. When we like bounce around within the city to different restaurants, different sites, and you bump into like people from all over the world, all the different cultures. Take an elevator, you're speaking all different languages, just people you would only see from social media. Now you see them face to face. In terms of like world, ex just like life experience. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. thing, and you have worlds and then this is going to bleed into sheffield which then will also after that like you said the world games which is in china i mean there was like we're going to see the world it's an opportunity to go from like north america to europe to asia to the uk to like this is the ticket and um it's big it's on all the televisions and, and i mean it's a it's going to be a great experience man i'm i'm happy you're coming along and your team's coming along and it's wild how many people in your first year you got coming yeah. no pressure no yeah. stress but you got a pretty stacked team yourself yeah you got a pretty no, it's, 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 i'm no i'm no stranger to pressure man I'm, I'm 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 ready for it i'm excited for it it's always especially you know when you work with certain lifters you know eyes are on you but i'm just like hey man it's just it's another day at work you know what i mean like you put the same effort energy intentionality into it that you always do and you know the rest greatest of me, job in the world hands. man greatest yeah. job in the world if this is work you're, you're living the dream if yeah, this is what it. you do, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it. No, man, I'm with, I, like I said, I, I thank God for that. You know, I'm somewhere I'm very big on. Hey, at the end of the day, you got to make a living. You know what I mean? And it's like, even if you if you can find a job, you at least tolerate. Do it. So you can take care of yourself, take care of your family. I have a wife, I have a daughter. That is always the first goal. But I always thank God that I get to do what I love. So yeah. What about the the rest of the team? Um, maybe some updates on them. Is Jamar? Has he decided where he's going or some in all the rest of your team? Is there other people crossing over or what does their future look like? So Jamar's going to be doing that, um, that Riley meet. The, the oh, problems. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going to be, he's going to be doing that. Um, he definitely plans on coming over and, you know, trying to solidify himself, throw his, you know, throw his hat in as far as the 93s. Um, for this year right now, um, Alex Lucko, lucky, he's probably still going to go ahead and do USAPL Nats. He got second last year, wants to come in and try to secure first. After that, though, may very well be switching as well. Um, it's, 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 we got to, I won't say too much because, you know, some stuff's still in the air, but we got, we got a few people who on the team are definitely looking to potentially uh, cross over at this point. And I think even more so after seeing their teammates go and do their thing, it's kind of fired up some of them as well who want to potentially do so. So I think, 
I think 2025 is going to be, I feel like 2025 is going to be the most united the U.S. has been in a while in terms of since the split, I think we're going to have a lot more people under the same umbrella again. So it'll be I, that, good. That's like, um, you know, we have a good talent pool, but to split it, I don't, I mean, any yeah. talent pool isn't deep enough to split. Like you always, it yeah. sucks to have people split and not going head to head. We're yeah. starting to have it now. And it's yeah. starting to become like, if you think of just the 93s in US from Gavin, Keiko, Petrie, Jamar in the future, and God knows who else, it becomes, it makes the, it makes the American titles mean something. Like how much better was it for Bob to have Big Dev there? That it yeah. wasn't like Bob comes in and just eats his food. It's like, no, obviously Bob was the heavy favorite, but Dev did play his role. Dev kept them honest. It's like, look, mm -hmm. if you start missing, I, I'm going to start changing up my attempts and God knows what's going to happen. Big De guys like that, like it's important. It, it makes it so much more, or the 83s. Um, Angelo, Chris, Russ, like obviously Russ had a spread, but we had a battle on the podium for yeah. second and third. And uh, Chris ended up 827. Like if Russ had a bad day, you don't just, you want to keep guys honest, if nothing else, you want yeah. it like that to keep it yeah. tight. Um, yeah. So I like that. I like my nationals as stacked as possible. I like everybody as much as possible in the same umbrella And SBD now is doing things like rally and other meets will be coming. That's just the beginning, but yeah. you don't go to worlds. It's not over. There's, yeah. there's yeah. other avenues. We'll have other yeah. showdowns and clashes. No, we got to see it, man. I mean, like, we, let's talk about the 66s, dude. Like, are you kidding me, man? That, that, in terms of battles, that one lived up to the hype, man. Like, 100. On every, on every level. Like, and don't get me wrong, man. Like, it was, especially because, you know, uh, Metal was going to have me handle it. But, like, you know, with Daniel not being able to make it, that sucked. And Brian, I that sucks. But I will say, as much as I wanted them there, it almost made it even more interesting because it's, it became over toss up and Charlie Yang, bro, like, 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 ah, oh, man, showing up big and, you know, because he, you know, he, he came from USAPL. So it's a, the 66 are a perfect example of what happens when there isn't a split and people are united. You yes. have those head to heads again. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's just different, man. There was a time before the split happened where, like, you know, Winning a USAPL Nationals meant so much more because it's like sometimes if you win Nationals, it's almost like you're definitely going to win awards because it's like it, in some weight class, it was more competitive. Now you can't necessarily say that. Like if winning PA Nats may be more in some weight classes than others. USAPL Nats may be some weight classes than others. So that's why, um, like whenever I think about like, man, why do I want to see it running on the same umbrella again? It's the 66s because that was insane. That was, we, that was we, crazy. We had two people drop out and it was still stacked. It was still crazy. Think about that. Yeah. You're like, how yeah. often do you have two of the top contenders drop out and it's still stacked? And not yeah. only was it still stacked, still had over the world record total. The yeah. total was still over the world record. Like yeah. that, that is crazy. And I'm pretty stacked. sure they, I thought, like the top, like didn't they all total like over 700? Um, or, or, Rick, or, near, me, I, or, near, or near there, something like that. Which like I got to, I got to pulled up one shake here. I'll take a look here to make sure. Uh, okay, Jonathan Garcia, 715.5. Charlie Yang, 705, pulled for the win. Mi barely missed it. Um, Austin Nikolai, okay, he did 692, but he, he was close. He missed the close, bench. That close, close, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's another thing, too, man, the storyline. So you've got, you've got Charlie Yang, the Bears been at it for a long time. You've got Jonathan Garcia, where it's always like the potential's always been there. Just got to put it together. You right. got the, the young b -nom Austin. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like. It, it's it's it was like I said this this meet as a whole was one of the most fun I've been at in a long time in terms of coaching handling watching it was it was awesome. Um, Jonathan Garcia's storyline too. I don't know yeah. if you've heard it. His uh, I just recorded. We reiterated some of it, and I'll drop that podcast. But he talks about he was an Olympic weightlifting hopeful at the Olympic weightlifting compound. He met. I'm talking training alongside. Like he met like. Michael Phelps and like a bunch of like, like at the actual American uh, Olympic weightlift or sorry, Olympics facility. And um, his father was a drug dealer who, when he was 11, they raided the cops, raided his house, gun in his face at 11, took his father away. His father was gone right up until he was around 1920. His father came home out of prison. And when his father left, like his father was abusive and Jonathan had to come home from the Olympic training facility because he's worried for his mother's safety. Him and his father ended up having a full-on physical altercation. 
Jonathan gets thrown out of his house. Um, Jonathan's brother gets kicked out of his little brother gets kicked out of his house. Jonathan has a kid with a girl and the girl walked out on Jonathan and his daughter. So Jonathan was single father, her daughter abandoned by the mother, kicked out of his house by his dad who just got home from prison and his brother's living with him and he's 20 and he lets go of his Olympic dream and he's literally training beside like people like Olympic stars like Phelps and them. He's going to be a weightlifter. And he thought that's the end. And he was, and he said, my friend, I'm four foot 11, born, raised in a trailer, drug dealing father who came out of prison, abusive. Uh, like everything was, he started so far back, so far back in any way. And for him now at 35 years old, married with kids and the whole nine telling a story to be like this, this is like, like he's got a heart, like a lion. And yeah. it, it, it one, one more piece that gave me chills when he told me, he said, I wanted to go to worlds. I need to win a world title. My, I, my son was born. He just had a kid born two months premature, which is extremely dangerous. He's fine now. But he was super dangerous. And he said, I was bedside with my son. And I said, I promise you, your dad is going to be a world champion. I promise you. Yeah, and then when part, he yeah. when when he won um, the uh, Powerlifting American Nationals and Team USA spot, two days later, he found out he lifts at the world championships on his son's birthday. Oh. So when he wow. promised, when he was bedside, Telling his son when he was born, if you make this, I'll make this happen. Fast forward a year later, exactly on the birthday, the anniversary of him making that promise is when he's going to be able to fulfill that promise. Now, you want to talk about a story? That's crazy. Bob, yeah, man, that's crazy. You can't that's miss crazy. it. Now, yeah. now everyone's going to watch. It's like, oh, my God. He told me getting chills. He tells the story better than I do. But I was like, my God, Jonathan, that's this is the craziest story. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm yeah, like, dude. See, I didn't, I didn't know that about his background either, as far as everything that with how how he brought up. But I mean, that's that's the thing, man, and that's really what makes powerlifting more interesting. At the end of the day, is like, you know, don't be wrong. If you're if you're a gym bro, if you're a gym bro, if you're just like straight. You don't have to know anyone's background. If you, if you see someone squatting six, seven hundred pounds, you're interested. But for a lot of people, it's just like it's not. You can't contextualize it, right? If you tell someone you bench four hundred versus five hundred, they don't really contextualize the difference. You know what I mean? Right. But when you have those background stories like that, and I think you know, we talked about this last time too. Where I said one thing that we can do to elevate powerlifting more is really focus more on these people's backstories, their history, what what it means to them, and why. That's what gets people to buy in. Because I mean, that's that's I, I didn't know about that, but that's crazy, you know? dude. It's, it is. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. You can't write a better somewhere. Or a film writer is like, holy shit, that was yeah. that is crazy. And for it to come to a climax on his son's birthday, the anniversary of him promises promising his son he'd win worlds. That is. Like, what are the chances? Yeah. That that is like the climax being that. And Jonathan, thirty five years old, is like, look, I just want this is my last run. However, it goes. I got to win worlds, Sheffield World Games, just like everyone else. This this year is such a special year because of everything that all the implications it is to win or podium yeah. at the very least podium. Yeah. Um, it's such a important time. That's why worlds is going to feel different. Yeah. I'm glad you're going to get the experience like of all worlds this one with like yeah. CBS no, Euro Sport and everything too. Yeah. No, it seems fitting, man, because people have asked me before, like, dang, man, you know, you've had people that have won nationals and arguably could have won, you know, would have won nationally if the split hadn't happened. Like, how do you feel that because that happened, you didn't get the chance until now? And I was just, I just tell them, like, I'm like, look, man, I'm a big believer that if I'm doing what I know I'm supposed to do in the natural, I trust God his timing with the rest. And I mean, I think the time looks pretty good. <laughs> like, like in terms of this being the first one for me, uh, yeah. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah. It's a big one, man. You're coming in heavy too. You're coming in heavy. You, your team, and all Team USA. It's, it's yeah. quite, it's quite the how you like me now. Well, let me introduce myself moment. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. It's gonna be good. Yeah, but listen, man. I, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Do you have? A, let everybody know um, how to reach you for your coaching services apps the whole nine and how they can get a holy yeah you can uh 
Follow me on Instagram at the school professor, just one word. Also find me on YouTube, the school professor. You can email me, the school professor at gmail.com. Uh, you can also subscribe to our subscription service, Powerlifting Now, Instagram at Powerlifting Now, and then uh, powerlifting-now.com for um, powerlifting informative content all about how, how to be a better powerlifter, better coach, powerlifters library. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for coming on, dude. I'm a new um I'm prepping, man. I got I got our boy Wasker coming on and it's gonna be I got I got questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> God bless him. But we'll keep in touch, man, and I'll see you. I'll, I'll probably talk to you in DMs before then, but see you in Lithuania, man. Yes, sir. See you there. See you on the other side of the world. And for everybody listening, please do subscribe, give us high ratings, and until next time, six pack lap it at. Six up. And we are out.